Welcome again. Right now we're at Romans chapter 3, verses 19 and 20. The works of the law. I'm telling you, this is going to be good because, you know, a lot of Christians, they completely misunderstand this. I mean, and I mean, a lot of Christian leaders do as well. So we're going to get into this. We're going to be talking about what the works of the law really means. Paul says, now we know that whatever things the law says, the law speaking about the law of God now, it speaks to those who are under the law that every mouth may be closed and that all the world may be brought under the judgment of God. Because by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. And again, by the works of the law, No flesh will be justified in his sight. And here's the bottom line. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. That's what it all comes down to. Now, you see, there's a great heresy in the church today. What this really means, the works of the law. Because, you know, you talk about the Torah, you talk about the law with a lot of Christians. They'll say, well, wait a second now. We're not justified by the works of the law. And they're quoting this verse right here. So we need to address this. Now, there's no better translation of the Bible to exhibit the Christian error than the New Living Translation. I don't know. I can just see it right now. A lot of you guys are just rolling your eyes. Yeah, New Living Translation. This is what the New Living Translation says. For no one can be made right by doing what the law commands. That's what the New Living Translation summarizes that this means. And that is unfortunately, what a lot of Christians believe. But don't forget the greater context of everything. I mean, everything. We we can spend literally days going through the scriptures that contradict what this says. But one good example is right in this very book alone, the book of Romans, just in the previous chapter. Paul said clearly, the doers of the law will be justified. Uh... What? Yeah, (laughs) Paul said that. The doers of the law will be justified. That is a completely different word than the works of the law. See, a lot of Christians confuse the two. They think the works of the law are the doers of the law. In other words, if you do what the commands tell you to do, then you are participating in the works of the law. And it kind of makes sense in a way, but listen. Paul is very easy to misunderstand. The apostle Peter said it himself in 2 Peter chapter 3. He warned people. It would be fair to say that the apostle Peter would be a genius when it comes to Christianity. And if he says that the writings of Paul are hard to understand and easily misunderstood, then you better believe that the writings of Paul are hard to understand and easily misunderstood. And this is one of them. Put it this way. Einstein is the genius of physics, just as Peter is the genius of Christianity. If Einstein said, well, this one particular function over here, that's hard to understand. If Einstein says it, you better believe it's hard to understand, okay? In the same way, Peter, if Peter said, The writings of Paul are hard to understand and easily misinterpreted. You better believe they're hard to understand and easily misinterpreted. So there are several things that Paul writes that is very confusing, to say the least. And this is one of them. So what is the difference between the doers of the law, as Paul said in the previous chapter, the doers of the law will be justified, and the works of the law, where he says here, No one will be justified by the works of the law. So what is the difference? The works of the law, in in some other translations, is translated the deeds of the law. It's what the law in and of itself does without any human involvement, okay? Whereas the doers of the law are the people who actually obey the law. I mean, that makes total sense. If you are a doer of the law, you actually obey the commands and you do what the law says to do. That is not to be confused with the works of the law, which is what the law does in and of itself, excluding everybody else. So what does the law do in and of itself? It teaches us right from wrong. It tells us what's right, It tells us what's wrong. And in so doing, it convicts all 
people of sin, generally speaking, okay? If you haven't done so already, check out the previous session on can anyone be righteous? Okay, so when I say all are sinners, I mean generally speaking. The law of God shows that the world is wrong. The world is not justified. So by the works of the law, what the law does in and of itself is it condemns the world, so to speak. It does not justify the world. Everybody remains unjustified in a very general sense by the law. Put it this way. If the law said, all you guys are good. Everything that you've ever done, everything that you've ever done from the beginning of history all the way till now, everything that everybody's ever done is all good. There's nothing wrong. Nobody has ever done anything wrong. If the law said that, then by the works of the law, we're all justified. You get it? If the law said that no matter what you do, it's good. And there's no such thing as a crime or a sin. Uh, if the law says that, then by the works of the law, all are justified. But the law does not say that. The law brings down certain commandments, and most people, by far most people, have violated at least one of the commandments. So therefore, by the works of the law, none are justified. Okay, It's got nothing to do with being a doer of the law as opposed to not being a doer of the law. Because if you are a doer of the law, you will be justified, as Paul said in Romans chapter two, the previous chapter. If you actually do the law, then you're not condemned by the law, and therefore you're justified. But because by far most, you know, the world, so to speak, is not a doer of the law, they are not justified. So by the works of the law, they're not justified. But if they actually became a doer of the law, they will be justified. It's very important to understand that most scholars agree. The book of Romans and the book of Galatians are among some of the books that Paul wrote before Acts chapter 21. Some of you might say, well, what's that got to do with anything? What are you getting at? Well, Acts chapter 21 is the pivotal point in Paul's life when Paul proved to the world that he doesn't preach against Torah. Because you see, even the apostles themselves were like, hey, Paul, we heard that you preach against the law of Moses <laughs> and the customs of the Jews. Uh, you know, you need to rectify this, Paul. You need to prove to the world that you don't but that you walk orderly and that you do keep the law. And you see, Paul did prove that in Acts chapter 21. Go back to the previous session where we talk about this in Acts chapter 21, plus the other videos such as taking Paul's letters in context and Gentiles enter Torah. Check out those previous sessions. That will give you a lot of information concerning that. But Acts chapter 21 is the pivotal point in Paul's life. Before that, he was accused of possibly teaching others against the law of Moses. After that, near the end of the book of Acts, Paul was not accused of teaching anybody against the law of Moses. Paul was not accused of teaching anybody to forsake Moses because he proved that in Acts chapter 21. Therefore, the people just <laughs> grasping at straws just decided to condemn Paul or at least attempt to condemn him for one thing for preaching the resurrection of the dead, which the Sadducees didn't like. So the books that Paul wrote after Acts chapter 21 doesn't say a whole lot about works of the law or grace versus works or grace and faith versus law. Doesn't say anything like that as we read in Romans and Galatians. Paul had a little change of writing style there, okay? He had a little bit of a change. You check out some of Paul's later letters, as in, after Acts chapter 21, such as the books of Timothy and so on and so forth, he doesn't say hardly anything in there about grace versus law or, you know, faith versus law or grace versus works. He learned his lesson in Acts chapter 21. Very important to understand. As always, seek God with all your heart, and if you do, you will find him. Call upon him, and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.